if we focus on action, the source of human action is human body. And human body is the the animal side of humans. And our actions are built on desires. In a sense, our body is the collection of desires. And through desires, the body has certain needs, but beyond needs, body has desires and those desires needs and desires both but since desire cover needs as well that's well just focus on desire desire spur or instigate action so you feel the desire for food and then you grab food okay so that's one but the human element so the body, desires, actions. And obviously, the basis of it is needs. So you need to fulfill, fulfill those needs, otherwise your body won't be able to sustain itself or survive. But desires are on top of the needs. And they are the basis of human uh, creativity, human, you know, um, dynamism and all those. So they, they are great... Um, Desires are great bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So. Uh, so desires is urge for transcendence in the sense that an urge for fulfillment beyond you know the fulfillment of the basic need. So that's the transcendence of your basic needs. And these desires instigate different types of actions. And whenever these desires uh, instigate action we can use part of our reason to find the best way to satisfy those desires so that can be one function of reason and reason is this are uh, non-animal part or part of reason is non-animal part and this non-animal part really comes to fault when reason sometimes tells us so there is a desire there is instigation and that could possibly lead to action but before it does reason stops it put hold to it and say whether should I do this or not so this putting limit to temporary or permanent limit to certain desire this is a specifically a uniquely human thing and it's basis of all morality so th that's why if, if there's an ideology which in principle says that all desires should be fulfilled and that that's their uh, that's our human right then that uh, ideology basically denies morality because the very conception of morality is based on this ability to put a stop to certain desires for certain reasons those reasons can be correct those reasons can be incorrect but this um, power which has ability to question our desires and in consequence the ability to put hold on certain desires stop certain desires delay certain desires is a uniquely human ability and power and Imam Ghazali says that this is the fourth type of reason so this fourth type this is the fourth type of reason fourth type of reason is the reason conception of reason as a power so our basic uh, so reason is a power basic power but that basic power when it matures through education through training and the heart of that is a family and then your maktab and all those things you develop this power into a practical 
reason which is able to distinguish between and by practical I mean here practically anything which is related to freedom oh. um, develops into practical reason which has ability to um, differentiate between uh, ability to question desires put some desires on hold permanent or temporary um, and eventually evaluate desires and let some desires fulfill some desire keep on fulfill either permanently or temporarily uh, due to variety of reasons those reasons can be moral as well as disciplinary um, those a reason can be practical etc but this is a power and it is a specifically human power in modality call it the fourth type of reason we can call it practical reason uh, it's um, different from the third type of practical reason we did that is more to do with experience rather than so this is practical reason in more in a Kantian sense and the third one was practical reason more in a in an Aristotelian sense uh, okay and uh, as we'll see this um, power is based on the ability to differentiate between two type of two types of consequences differentiate between two types of consequences um, immediate and prolonged so one of the reason you might want to stop the um, some desires or put some desires on hold because you can see that all the immediate consequences are you know satisfaction and pleasure and all that long-term um, consequences are misery pain and all that so long-term misery and pain outweigh immediate satisfaction and pleasure that's why you you uh, don't act on the instigation of certain desires but this um, taming of desires or putting them on hold or just uh, delaying certain desires or reducing certain desires or not fulfilling certain desires at all this crucially depends on this fundamental difference in differentiation between short term and long term consequences And a rational person is a person in this sense is a person who can see beyond short-term consequences consequences and see the long-term consequences and that's what uh, Imam Ghazali calls abaqibul umur can see the long-term cons consequences of a thing and go beyond the short-term consequences which are pleasure or maybe pleasure and satisfaction and see that long-term this thing is bad for me this thing is bad for my body or this thing is bad for my soul or this thing is bad in itself that's why I'm going to put stop to this or ignore this or transcend this immediate pleasure and satisfaction and look for something which is lasting and that eventually depends on the whole difference between a dunya and a lakhira because this is a the fundamental Islamic morality is based on this distinction between dunya, this world, and the hereafter. But if you look at the the etymology of these things, dunya means anything which is nearer nearer to you, and akhirah means anything which is farther from you. So you can't really have this distinction between short term and long term unless you have actually a uh, metaphysical distinction between dunya and akhir and that's that's why unless you are you have this uh, metaphysical conception of hereafter all these distinction between short term and long term uh, are basically uh, illusions in the sense that uh, as Keynes has supposed to have said this that in the long term we are all dead uh, so 
unless you have a con con concept of akhirah, all the distinction, all the effort to distinguish, distinguish between short term and long term, fundamentally are going to collapse. And we see this, for example, uh, in the world of uh, like utilitarian philosophers uh, make this distinction between short term utility and long term utility. Uh, and in capitalism, you have this distinction between short term profits and long term profits. But if we study the evolution of modern capitalism, you will see that this distinction has collapsed. Why has this collapsed? Because unless you have a this distinction is anchored in the metaphysical distinction between dunya and akhra these conceptions are not going to go not going to hold because every capitalist is a human being and they know that they are going to be dead long term so they are always going to prefer short term uh, profits over long term profit and that's one of the basic crises of one of the fundamental crises of capitalism at the moment but anyway i digress um, so this is this is the fourth conception of reason which Imam Ghazali is going to talk about and I basically explained it now we are going to go back to the text and see if there is anything we have